This podcast is sponsored by the Crazy Cast and Human Wire Productions at human-wire.com. And the Gypsy Haven, Elgin's only witch shop at www.thegypsyhaven.com and onlinebookandsupplies.com. Two witches. You mean like witchcraft? Sharing their opinions and beliefs about the practice and theory of magic. Must be the season of the Hey guys, this is Feather and LaFay. Welcome back to Season of the Witch. We've got a bonus episode for everyone yeah. today. Seeing that there is a big holiday coming up and hopefully we get some people that are going to all go out and celebrate, we wanted to give you a little extra info about it. Beltane! Beltane surprise attack. We, we are hitting you up sooner than the every two week interval of podcasts. So this is, this is your bonus right here. And we're going to talk about one of our greater or major sabbats. So hopefully I, this could be a lot of people's first Beltane mm-hmm. celebration or, I mean, obviously I like to start out with the basics. So mm-hmm. simply put Beltane, it starts, it's a Celtic origin from a lot of it and it's talking about bell the celtic word meaning the bright one and the gaelic word for tyne meaning fire so this is a fire celebration fire festivals we all love our fire this is a big one yeah <laughs> let it burn and on the season seasonal wheel and everything and where the lord and the lady are there mm-hmm. they are getting down basically oh, yeah. it's, it's the fertile yeah, this is actually, Beltane marks the start of the summer season. Yes. You know, so that that's why it's considered a fire festival. Yeah, <laughs> let's get freaky. It's time to get freaky. And, okay, George Michael. Was that George Michael? I, yeah, I think so. I anyway, think so. Uh, anyway, so this is what, the season of abundance and creation. Fertility. fertility growth. Love. Sowing the seeds. Purification. A lot of starting projects or putting th- putting into work the things mm-hmm. that you're going to sow at the end of the season. Right. Unions. Whole lot of sex. Marriage. Sex. Drinking. Sex. Debauchery. Sex. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. You know, we're, we're going to be stressing that a lot because out of all of the seasons, out of all of the holidays, this is the one where you are, you know... We've been brought up to believe that we have to behave ourselves, but back in the old Psh. day, Beltane was all about being promiscuous and going sexual amazing. and just going crazy, sky-clad naked running through the forest and shit. So tonight's going to be a whole lot of sex talk. If you can't handle that, then This is yeah. the, uh, the warning and disclaimer. <laughs> right? Morning. Morning. If the word penis and vagina offends you, you need to go... Watch oh. TV or no? They even say that shit we, on TV. We've nowadays, got the I other think, but... <laughs> other episode, which was a lot easier. <laughs> so don't forget, there are other things to listen to. But hopefully, for yeah. everyone else, no, enjoy. you're not going anywhere. You know, you <laughs> like it when we say vagina. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> but just like you said, Lafay, this is the time of year where your goals have been determined, and now it's time to start on them. A whole lot of swift moving energy, mm-hmm. fast acting, lots of fire. So, history, little bits of things beforehand. I like those things. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, traditionally, there was the idea that the bonfires, all the bonfires in the the you know small village, whatever was going on, would be put out, and there would be one major fire, and that was called the tiny gun. Mm-hmm. And people would jump that fire mm-hmm. to cleanse and bring fertility, and then you know couples would jump it to pledged themselves to each other. Animals and other, all of the cattle and everything for the year were blessed in that smoke. They were actually, from my understanding, there were two bonfires when it came to the cattle. Right. They could be walked through walked the, in between through them. between the two of them, correct. And people would follow also, which would yeah, kind of ward away any ailments and stuff. Right. You know, it was a upcoming. cleansing and purifying mm-hmm. process. Right. So we've got two big ass fires going on right now. Yeah, yeah, and then, I mean, like the Romans were into this. What I love about pagan tradition is you can look at it through history, and regardless of where you were geographically, 
or where were you where you were in the history timeline, there's always this similar energy that people have. And whether you're in Germany current day and you're going out into the the Rhineland vineyards going out drinking and just being ridiculous <laughs> which is a blast. perfect time of year for that it's a perfect <laughs> time or you're a, a Roman you know celebrating floralia mm-hmm. so the festival of flowers and unbridled sexual activity right so it's it's definitely similar energy consistently throughout this and it's always really interesting you know and, and it kind of sucks how we've like tamed so many of the old ritual ways because if if you look back at the the huge festivals and the stories and all of the really cool shit that they did and nowadays we are really boring you know we, we've been we've been programmed to tame it down and stuff when <laughs> because you know sex is a bad thing and well, no. okay, especially North American. Yeah, yes. Puritanical yes. North American society is so prude. <laughs> Beyond, <laughs> you go to Germany and you go to these uh-huh. other European countries. They've got tits out on on the weather station and the shit. Weather. She she's telling you the forecast and her nipples are tweaking because it's cold outside. That's sexy. I will give Japan some credit, and it falls along with it. They just recently had their penis festival. What? Really? They have a <laughs> giant festival where they carry, carry around this yeah. giant... It is a huge penis that they have this huge parade it's about. parade of the phallus. Exactly. So, again, there's something to... And I've it's got a, balls of steel. There we go. Balls. Got it's balls. cyclical. Mm-hmm. I really think that human beings just acknowledge the fact that this is when the animals are doing this. This is when the plants are doing this. Birds and, and the bees. Everyone and... is in the mind to fuck. Right. Right. <laughs> So, yeah, love, light, and sexuality. Big celebrations of Beltane. You know, uh, it's the time of the Oak King. Mm -hmm. You know, the Holly King is dormant now. The Green Man, Jack of the Green. You've got Cernanos, Mm -hmm. who's pretty strong at the moment. Um, Pan. Yeah, what was... Oh, I found one that you would love. It's this Celtic goddess. And so some a deity and a lot of a lot of deities that are going to be included in this have mm-hmm. a lot to do with fertility and sex and okay. oh, general. Uh, okay. <laughs> I did find this Celtic goddess though. Her name is Sheila Nagig. Okay. And she I will not li- pretend to be able to pronounce that. Yeah, she literally is usually described in or like they found art descriptions of her or just little little pictorials of her and everything. She pretty much has oversized vulva so that she can <laughs> accept the semen of the world. Wow, that's one big pussy. Yeah, that's, she has that's a monstrous like, pussy. Woo. <laughs> so, <laughs> holy crap, that's cool. So, that's like if you need a if you need a hug, go envelop yourself in the labia of this deity. <laughs> right. And it's okay. I have to show you. Have to see this picture of her. She's she's ridiculous. Is she she's not the old crone that's sitting there with her legs spread, is it? Oh, yes, I've seen her. She's she's bald. Yeah, that she's, one. She's bald. She's not even pretty. She's the, older. The is one she? that I've seen. It looks a lot like that. It definitely portrays the crone. Mm-hmm. You know, and she's old and haggard, and she's like scary looking. Yeah, but she's spreading her crotch open. She's I'm just like, wow, literally wow, like got this like vulva <laughs> underneath. <laughs> and it's, okay, <laughs> so if that doesn't get the point across, <laughs> right? What this large? Is, yeah, it's it's that not just this fire. <laughs> <laughs> So, and then there's Priapus, which is the Greek god, and he's pretty much all about, I mean, like, he was about sexuality, but frustrating sexuality, because oh. he was always rock hard. He was horny as hell all the damn time. All the damn time. Okay, and what was his name? Priapus. Priapus. And that's where we get the Priapus, uh, the um, <gasps> big phallic. With the acorn yes, on it. that's where that yes, comes from. Yes, that, so, that's one of the crafty things uh-huh. that's fun to make. Oh. It came from him. Yeah, so okay. Greek god of like Viagra. <laughs> <laughs> so this was a really entertaining season holiday to look up just because we're dealing yeah. so much with sex, 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 sex. sex, sex. What, what is it? Woo! What, how do you pronounce it? Bellinus? Celtic? High deity? 
B E L E N U S. Bellinus. Bellinus. I don't know if it'd be yeah. a hard A or not. Bellinus. Yeah, associated with symbols of phallic shaped stones, the bull, the horse, and mm-hmm. the oak. And I have to cough. Hang on. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Flora, just like you said earlier, mm-hmm. you know, the Roman deity Flora, uh, goddess of fertility, vegetation, and flowers. Um, yeah, and th- that's looking back at some of her festivals. Mm-hmm. Those are the, the ones Roman that sounded, ones? yeah. Fun. The Romans were like sick, twisted, cool fucks with oh, some things. It was, they were the, the kings of debauchery. I swear. Yeah. Well, okay. You get it? it. You know why the Romans were the way they were? I mean, like, they were so successful in their society that they were able to move on beyond just necessities mm-hmm. and got into all that crazy debauchery. That's why I love the Romans so they much. They had a lot of time on their hands. <laughs> they did. Where they could just, like, get freaky with themselves and, you know, gladiators and <laughs> killing and slaying <laughs> and fucking and Caesars and, yeah. Bathing. They were- <laughs> So I will make sure that I, re- I uh, mention the Aztec goddess. Okay, so it's Shoki, Shoki Etzel. Shoki Etzel. She okay. is just a crazy deity all about... I mean, like, all of these goddesses tend to be more about fertility and everything. Okay. But I know that there are not enough people mentioning some of the other... Like, I, I tend to be very heavy on the European, the Roman, the whatnot, but you start looking into, like, the Aztec and the Mayan deities and everything, there's mm-hmm. some badass bitches in there. Oh, yeah. You know, again, I'll admit, I'm not into the human deities whatsoever. I'm more into my animals and stuff, but it doesn't... Is it, yeah. Well, you know, animals not really... Coyote, not this season, but, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have my animal things that I go to, but the stories of the deities and all the festivals, festivals, the festivities <laughs> um, revolving around these these people um, were amazing. They, and they sound like a lot of fun. So, I don't know. I still pay attention to them, too, even though I'm, I'm not that kind of girl. I'm not that kind of girl. Okay, so we're not going to go into extreme detail Mm-mm. about everything that you can all of the different ingredients for an altar because it's just a little bit of homework. And mm-hmm. we're, I've got the blog. I, I will be listing a lot of different things. If you have a brain fart and all of a sudden can't think of something, there's right. there's resources out there. There's plenty. Right. But I love including flowers aplenty just oh, yeah. because they're so heavily involved in fertility and just basic symbols. Mm-hmm. So I'll always make sure that, you know, I like to include apple blossoms if I can or tree blossoms a lot of the time. Okay. And I kind of went with the color yellow for, you know, the, mm-hmm. the fire festivals and Rue representation of really the sun. One. So primrose, hawthorn, rowan, marsh, marigold, and gorse. G-O-R-S-E. I don't know. I don't know. From my understanding, it's a really pretty yellow flower. So, but there's other things Rats. simple like daisy, ivy, and lily of the valley. Yes. That correspond very well with Beltane, too. I like Rue. Mm-hmm. I'm very happy with that one. Yeah, I think we talked about rue last night, though, too. You mm-hmm. have to be kind of careful with working with rue, but it's stinky, and it's like it's you, some people's skin doesn't like it, but it's Dandelion so is a good one, too, yeah. and easy to find, and a lot of people forget that the, you know, it's they're edible. They're weeds. They're Killed weeds. weeds. They're not, though. I, I, I mean, oh, like, they're I love edible. Them. They're, they're, like, totally dominating my yard right now, <laughs> and... You know, Plentiful. I, yeah, and I, I won't spray them. You know, I just like, you know, eventually they're going to turn into dandelions, and I like letting the dogs chase them. And yeah. I don't know. Anyway. Um, as for stones, I mean, it's they're, they're a lot deeper stones. So, I mean, like, you've got emerald and bar- barrel, tourmaline. Mm-hmm. Redstone. Yeah, and then uh, garnet. Rose quartz. Yes. I mean, there's a yeah, lot that can yeah. go into it. It's, it's all based on your interpretations. Right. And then aminals. Aminals, that's my, yeah, those are my babies. Um, your typical birds and bees. Mm-hmm. So I've got bees and cow. You know, we were concerned, we were talking about fertility, the ad- right? Very strong with fertility. And doves, frog for cleansing. Cool. This, this time of year. Rabbit and goat for fertility. Yeah. Girl, let's fuck like bunnies. Mm-hmm. I've got cats. Okay. Cats and the lynx as separate ones. And then nice. uh, the swallow. Okay. <laughs> How hey. appropriate for the occasion. And the dove. Okay. And then goats as well. Mm-hmm. So a lot of just kind of... Some, <laughs> some things to do with more um, like uh, the farming 
mm-hmm. animals, a lot of farming animals, just to do with you know getting your your animals in preparation for the season to come, mm-hmm. and then a lot of things that just are high frequency. You know, fuckers. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Like, I had a guinea pig that had 20,000 guinea pigs. Colors. Colors you apply to all aspects, from your altar cloths to your candles to the flowers you put in your hair to all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So what are, what are some of your colors? I don't know. Um, definitely a lot of sun colors. So you've got yellows, you've got deep reds, uh, more jewel tones tend to be the thing. Mm-hmm. So heavy green or like a spring green. Yeah. A lot of the times. I'm, um, I like the boring color brown because it earth. really represents earth and animals. Mm-hmm. To me, the green for, you know, the grass and the abundance, fertility. Pink for the union and love. Yeah. You know, red is more lust and passion, you know, so it's on the lighter end of it, the spectrum, we've got pink. And then, of course, white. Yes. For the purity, the power, and the protection of, of the season, too. So I'm going to do food because I love food. <laughs> yeah, you you make amazing food, and I burn water. Oh, but I can't wait for dessert this time. I'm Okay, so really you want to focus on including dairy and breads and cereals and oatmeals and fresh fruits that are of the season. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be like strawberries. That can be things like rhubarb. Mm-hmm. Um, things that are considered aphrodisiacs are also really helpful because yeah. that you want to get into the mood. And I... On that topic, and I'm honey, gonna, uh, yeah, and don't absolutely forget honey. honey with the bees and just amazing. Keep something in mind. But we're talking about the energy of this time of year, and Beltane represents a very swift moving fire type energy. Okay, so that is when we, even as humans, we are physically up and we need to be active, 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 active. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we are speeding up. So even when it comes to the foods that we we incorporate in ritual or that we actually consume. You want to think light, light fresh things, fresh salads. fruits, vegetables, macaroni salad, you know, picnic food. Yes. Anything that's really, really heavy, that's going to slow you down and make you sluggish. You know, I'm save not that saying for like a dessert, save that for, you know, a, a sweet thing. Like, yeah, but you don't want to be eating porridge. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, every good barbecue has some sort of I'm, I'm not vegan. All right. I'm going to say <laughs> that right now. I do eat meat. Hate me all you want. I don't care. Um, but even when it comes to the intake of if you do eat meat or heavier things, keep a smaller percentage. Keep everything else nice and healthy and light. You know, to go with the energy of the season, because this, this is the time of getting up and going. And you think naturally, people tend to not like to eat heavy foods when it's warm out, right? So the body's going to want to naturally go into that lighter. I do this regardless. I know as soon as it gets cold out, I want fatty, you know, carbs and everything. My bat, I have to battle <laughs> that. My body wants to hibernate, hibernate, and get yeah. all fat and comfy and everything, right? So as soon as it's warm out. You just naturally want to be a lighter eater. It's just going to feel better. And for the people who really do like your heavy stuff, <clears throat> you'll have your season for it. You will have your day where we're <laughs> supposed to consume all of that kind of stuff. So just kind of keep it in mind. Our bodies, we're you know, we, we try to align with the natural energy of the earth. And the earth right now is staying say, is saying, stay light, stay healthy. You know, don't don't drag your ass. We we want to run through Bikini the forest. Season is yes, soon. yes. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're eating. Okay, the big thing that I wanted to talk about. Are we? <laughs> Mm-hmm. I don't know if you have anything else besides that. I'm ready to go into activities. Well, some some herbs for yes. cooking for food and okay. stuff like that. And again, that that's more of yours. But I have a couple, you know, that kind of coincide with it, such as rosemary, basil, mm-hmm. even rose petals for love intentions. And because, like I was just saying, the swiftness of energy. How about a sprig of mint, which which would be really nice. I like using paprika. Okay. Um, anything that's going to be included in fire, so even cinnamon at times is going to mm-hmm. be good for that. Cinnamon is just year round. Yeah, cinnamon I use rocks. that for everything. Um, you can also use. It's really about including fruits into things. Mm-hmm. So just uh, apple. Citrusy. Apple's going to be really mm-hmm. heavy. Lemon. Lemon's going to be good. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, and fennel. Okay, fennel seed is going to okay. be really good just to include. And one of my favorites is mugwort. 
Mm. Yeah, it, it fits right into that whole lusty, mm-hmm. you know, field. So, you know, besides just being healthy, and you know, sometimes that gets boring. Let's get lusty. You know, if you want to add a little lust into the mix, throw in some mugwort. Yeah, add some ad- aphrodisiacs into mm-hmm. that. Beets. Okay. I, it's uh, that's part of the seasonal thing. They're they're going to be coming around. The first round of beets are usually popping up. Okay. And those tend to be really good for the libido, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> All right, dudes. If you don't have Viagra, go get some fucking beets, because it's, it's time to get it on. How about the old traditions where some of the... I believe it was the men, and I, I could be wrong, mm-hmm. but some of the men were sent out into the forest to retrieve nine different types of wood yes, to add to, to the, the big fires. Right. I have, what do I, I have five of them, and maybe you can fill in the blanks of okay. some of them that I'm missing, but I've incorporated birch, uh-huh. hawthorn, yep. oak, yep. pine, yep. and willow. Rowan. Okay. Mountain ash. Okay. Hemlock. Okay. And cedar is one that's showing up here. I've got a couple. I don't have your nine, so I have the ones that I know. So these are the ones that I have all of your list, and then Willow was another one. I think I know Willow was one of those nine. Okay. Yeah, I mean, a lot of us are tree huggers, you know, and it's like, hey, you know, Birch, it's your time of year, baby. You know, so, I mean, it it does fall into that. And uh, I don't know. I, I just wanted to give a little shout out to the trees. Uh, okay, we can't forget the fairies. Oh, God. Time of the fairies. Little pain in the fucking asses. But yes, <laughs> it is definitely time for the fairies. We've got Mercury and re- we've got five things in retrograde, and then we're going to have fairy energy coming oh, around. Oh, God. batten down the hatches. Grab your, your iron crucifixes and shit if you don't want fairies in, in around your... Okay, why do yeah. we hate fairies? That, I know a lot of people no. love... Well, why are we cautious of fairy energy? No, it's, I it's not... Ever, I don't I, hate them either. They're just little booger butts, okay? <laughs> they're, you know, they're, they're like little kids that come to play that don't over sugared caffeinated yeah and and they like to pull little pranks and but if you're nice to them they'll be nice to you back yeah absolutely and and you can give them little chores and stuff and you know and sometimes they get done and sometimes they don't (laughs) and you know and and you do you reward them with they love shiny things so if you've got fairies in your house and your keys wind up missing you, you know, you got to yell at the fucking fairies. And sometimes I don't have enough time in the day to be screaming at fairies <laughs> and, the, and my neighbors think I'm fucking nuts. You know, but the, the fairies are cute. Iron, they it renders them powerless. So, but it is time of the fairies. So, okay, but we'll be nice and allow the fairies to run through the gardens and do, do their fairy some, magic. Leave them something. Honey, they like honey. Mm-hmm. Strawberries. Um, milk. They like yeah. they like uh, creams. Mm-hmm. They like a lot of the. Uh, I tend to leave them kind of like a little fruit platter. Yeah, something that, and then I can leave it in the garden, and I know that it'll decompose, and I don't have to worry about right. it. So right, it's it just good attracts for fruit flies. Well, yeah. <laughs> they're needed. They suck, but whatever. No, it is definitely time for the fairies, and and they have to have their year round. We can't keep them locked in a cage forever. And I'm not <laughs> saying that we lock them up, but a lot of times we just don't want them around because they can be little pills. But right now we we yeah we openly invite shut them and the tolerate. Yeah, <laughs> don't tell me to shut the fuck up, you little fucker. Anyway, fairies, um, yes, um, fairies, and we can talk about some activities and stuff. But I wanted to throw something in yes, right before I've been this, waiting for this because I told you before we started this that I'm actually going to take a little different twist, mm-hmm. and I'm going to be speaking for. People who are not able to openly celebrate this holiday yes. around um, family. Solitary that, practitioners. Well, no. That's no? my twist. Ooh. Okay? This isn't solitary. This is actually manipulating the people around you as Burn. to you can actually hold an activity. Okay? And invite your Christian friends or family over. And they won't know that it's related to Beltane. That's tricky. Tricky, tricky, tricky. So you're still able to celebrate, but you just won't be bringing out the big guns. You're not going to be blasting pinnacles or anything like that all over the place. It's not needed, though, as we've said many times before. This is a celebration. This isn't ritual where you're breaking out your wand and your athame and doing all that crazy shit. 
this is a celebration of of the season of that energy the mm-hmm. thing that is the most important part of a sabbath right so this I, I'm going to be talking to the people, too, that it's like, well, I really want to do, I want, you know, I want to celebrate this stuff, but my family, they're so hard Christian. Pay attention to the, some, some of the things that we're going to say here. This isn't for everybody who is out of the closet, okay? I'm, I'm going to be playing, it's not devil's advocate, I'm reaching out to you guys, too. No, we're just going to include everybody, because right. it, there are, there's a lot of people out there that have to stay very hidden in the closet. There's mm-hmm. some that are just solitary, and then if you've got a group awesome but when you've got a group there's so many ideas going on it's you're not you guys i'm the least worried about because most of the time you know how to do your homework Mm -hmm. so let's work with the people that you know let's give you some ideas so that you're not just stuck on sunday right i mean some of the rituals that we do perform they focus on personal goals self-improvement creative creative fertility (laughs) hey baby (laughs) purification of romance Romance meaning that, okay, maybe you're not a little fuck bunny. You're not out to go out and screw everybody because this is the time of year where you can safely wear a fucking condom. But you may not want to do that, but you just want some love in your life. Okay? Yeah. Like, like what we were talking about before. Right now is the season of either fucking or fighting. So if, if you know, Shall if you just... begin? Yeah. <laughs> if, if, if you're looking for some romance, this is the time of, of year. This is the season to, to start doing that, too. It's finally warm right. enough to go out and enjoy yourself again. Yeah. For those That's lucky people, said. lucky people that can run around sky clad. Woohoo! Hell yeah. The bugs aren't out yet. So you're not going to be Enjoy it. <laughs> enjoy it while you can. Right? Okay. In the old, in the old times, rituals were performed to protect the crops, livestock, and people. You know, we talked, we talked about the fires and, you know, even they made offerings. I love watching the Vikings, yes. you know, the, the show Vikings. They would do that huge offering to Odin. Yeah. Every but year. they were really bloody, you know, and they, they would slaughter cows and stuff and they'd be covered in their blood. And, you know, and they, they did one make human sacrifice every year. Yeah. It was the most, they would give up their most gifted horses. Uh-huh. They would give up their most prized possessions. And we are not telling you to do that. Absolutely not. Okay. There's, there's remedy. There's other wow. options. We are, we are just showing appreciation to a really cool show and old ways all right so we are not telling you to go slaughter your favorite cat please don't do that okay anyway ain't nobody got time for that (laughs) no all right what's what's the alternative um off the top of your head because i cannot remember it right now uh when a spell calls for blood what's the uh ingredient alternative Uh Blood root. There you go. Thank you. Blood root is is an herb. It's like if we're going to tell them not to do it, let's give them the option for what the alternative right, is. Right. Right. Yeah. No. We we do not shed real blood. I mean that. And and that kind of goes into deeper tools of performing some spell works and stuff. Not this. We're not even really talking about that right now. We're we're talking about celebration. Absolutely. So there is no bloodshed. <laughs> no bloodshed allowed in this party. Okay. <laughs> If anything, you're swapping spit and sweat and that Some kind other of fluids <laughs> in a consensual, enjoyable right. way. <laughs> and for those newlyweds out there, yeah, this let's get pregnant, time. baby, because this, this is <laughs> which works so great because this is the time when everyone would would get their yearly bath. So mm-hmm. realistically and spiritually, it made sense that this is the time to go out and fornicate because they're all clean. <laughs> Right. And and that on that note, yeah, on that <laughs> note, we talk a lot about fire mm-hmm. in this, but water was a big element for, mm-hmm. for Beltane as well. And I read something along the lines of the old ways where they would go out on Beltane morn and collect the dew and put it on their face and their skin. Yep. That um, the first dew of that sunrise. Yes, it encouraged the youth, the beauty, um, cleansing of any type of skin ailments and stuff. So, water and sacred wells were wells were big. Um, this this was the time of year where you actually pulled water from sacred wells and you would bathe in them. Yeah. So. Fire and water, which kind of contradict each other, but they, yeah, they, they go hand in hand. What? Anyway, what? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so do we want to talk about that tricky trick situation real quick and go into that before we go into some, uh, your invite your Christian friends before we go in? Okay. A, a scenario. All right. Um, She's not a Christian! 
<laughs> no, okay. All right, you really, really want to have a gathering with your family, and you are secretly celebrating Beltane. Okay? Mm-hmm. So you're going to throw a picnic. All right? You are going to plan this picnic, and everybody's going to be coming to your Beltane thing, and we're yeah. just calling it a family picnic. The way that you decorate. She has a witch card! You use those colors, okay? If you, even Yellows if it's just the napkins. Stuff. Right. You know I'm putting out yellow napkins, and it represents this, and they're going to be wiping their face with yellow, fuckers, <laughs> you know? The flowers that you pick to put on on the table, be very specific. And when they ask you, oh, these are wonderful flowers, just say, yeah, I thought they were pretty. They don't fucking need to know the significance behind it, you know? Whatever food you decide to put into it. Yes. If you ask food. people to bring things. And even the games, which we're going to get yeah. into the activities and stuff, even the games that, because it's your, it's your gig, it's your party, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> so typically, even your, your biggest of fanatics, you know, whatever religion they practice, everybody likes to get together and play games and have fun and laugh and nobody's together. gonna call out the no. where it came from no. it's just a game and it, well we're not bringing sex to this party right you know it's like hey uncle ralph you know mm. look aunt janice is running through the fields oh, butt naked no it's not that kind of that kind of party right. that's with your friends after the party you know that's a different kind of party <laughs> <laughs> it's a really good close yeah. group of friends but you you kind of get the idea Right, so you Even, are still decorating and you're providing the proper foods. I got one more atmosphere. Yeah, the punch. Okay, because I've got one thing that you can make. It's called a uh, maple. It's a wine or a punch that you include flowers in. Okay, specific ones. So you can make all of that and make it super yummy. Mm-hmm. And it's just I found it on Pinterest. Exactly. Again, when you're when everybody's like, okay, what what is the meaning behind this? It just you can be it's very a picnic. Innocent. It's a picnic, but you know in your head and and in your heart that you are actually, check this out, you're celebrating Beltane with your hardcore, you know, fanatic mother. Right. (laughs) And she's enjoying herself. Check that shit out. Now, if you ever told her, like the next day, she'd probably kill you. Right. (laughs) By the way. She's not Christian. Yeah. Yeah. Guess what? You've been exposed to the devil, bitch. And then you survived. Even your holidays were pagan. (laughs) So, yeah, just because your family doesn't accept you doesn't mean that you cannot be creative and kind of secretive. And still oh, enjoy this holiday. Kill them not. Is that and absolutely you, you no? Kind of I mean, understand like, what you, I'm saying. There's a lot of ways of getting around it, and mm-hmm. still in that energy. Regardless, there's a lot of people wanting to do picnics anyway because right. it's now time to go do that. Mm-hmm. So, I think there you're going to find a lot less uh, resistance mm-hmm. than you would expect at other the holidays. Right. It's like right. you know, why are you celebrating Groundhog's Day so formally? Eh, you know, it's Imbolc or Imbolc or yeah, no, just don't say those it. big fancy words yeah. to them because then they're like, oh my god, that's They'll dark, out. right? But I'm gonna go one step further, mm-hmm. okay? Um, and I'm gonna talk about city folk for a second, okay? The people, I mean, because this is the time of year where we encourage people to go outside, right? To run through the fields and take off your shoes and hug a tree and let's go plant some shit in the garden and, and all this stuff. Well, if you're stuck and in the heart of Chicago or New York City or something LA. and you don't have any of that, what are some options? Okay? And let's say you, you really don't have anywhere to go. Um, Ain't nobody so got time for that. We don't... You can't start a big-ass bonfire in the middle of your New York City apartment. So we're going to put together a bunch of candles, a bunch of them, yeah. in a contained area. And guess what? You just made yourself a small bonfire. As long as you feel like it's a representative of that energy. Right. You are still bringing all of that energy to the table. Um, the same way that you decorate the inside of your apartment. You know, bring the outdoors in. If you're not near a spring, you know, collect that water. Let it sit out during mm-hmm. the moon. 
and just let it flow at a little trickle. You've got flowing, moving water that's right. going to give you that cleansing capability. Right. And, you know, your imagination is your own limitation. Exactly. So, you know, it, when it comes to people that say, I really want to do this, but fuck your bullshit, you know, reasons. You can get around anything if you really, really want to. How about no? We're trying to promote some thought for those people. Okay, to encourage you to actually start practicing, come out of your come out of your closet and start celebrating with the rest of us. That's what this whole thing is about, really. And I when we did Ostara, when we did all these different when we did the last time, we didn't feel like we stressed it enough that this is supposed to be a celebration. Mm -hmm. So it's about enjoying that time with other people. Which I can't wait to get into our divinations for that one. Yeah. So we have a we have a surprise for this. Yeah. But even even before we even get you the fun crafty yeah. stuff. Oh no, I've got more you know, okay, cool. Um some and we were talking about city folk for a second, being stuck inside. Mm -hmm. Okay, say so you don't say so you're solitaire and it's like a storming outside and you you have a healthy respect for lightning and you don't want to go outside and play in the rain. Right. Okay. So what are some other things that you can do inside besides coming up with a really cool seasonal altar, you know, which is, like you said, self-explanatory. This is the time of year for spring cleaning and makeovers. Feng Shui again. <laughs> yeah. But think about it like this, because, you know, if we're sitting here and talking about you need to clean your house, you need to save your house. We say that over and over and over again. Yes, it is necessary. But think about a personal makeover. Why don't you go get your hair cut? Why don't you know? Let's go get clean up some the closet of all those things you don't wear. Robe. This is the beginning of new life and a new you. So let's get it kick started with something fun and interesting. This is like, like the makeover. fun New Year's resolution thing. Mm -hmm. Like where you're always saying, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. And it's like, this is when the farmers are planting their seeds. This is when you're getting this plan. Like, it may not be fun, but, you know, starting a workout regimen, mm -hmm. if you're doing that, go get some cute clothes to go out Hell to yeah. go out with that workout Hell regimen. yeah. And also, for the people that are already kind of active, this is my dare. This is my challenge to you. My challenge is to face a fear. <laughs> I want you to go a little crazy. I don't want you to go to jail. OK, but if OK, chick out there, girlfriend, you got a crush on this dude. You've had it on him for the past six months over the whole winter break. I dare you to go up and and flirt with him. Do something a little dangerous. OK, come out of that seed. You're bursting from from the, the dirt out there and start to fucking flower. We've had a lot of introflective, mm -hmm. dark period with the winter, and now it's time to take that action. The sun is out. Right. You know, and guys, you too. You know, it's you know, <laughs> just like we were talking about the fairies for a minute, how, you know, we can't keep them caged forever. Well, I am going to give all the males a temporary pass for this season. All right. For, for this celebration. And you females, you're going to lighten up on wow. them. And you're going to let the males be males, and they, most of them, thrive around their pee pee. Okay, <laughs> and they they look for any opportunity to Who's be that daddy? crazy, spunky, horny goat. And I'm not saying you have to fuck them, but don't, <laughs> but don't be so hard on them. Allow them to express that. Yes, that feeling. express it. And guys, if you go up and start playing flasher or start wanking that shit on the girls, then Don't I'm giving us. them full permission to whack you in the peepee -pee with a very large stick. <laughs> Don't cross certain things. <laughs> okay? Still be cool, but be now flirtatious. Now to go clubbing. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, the guys are literally... Don't get into fights, but that's no. the, the, the kind of energy they've got it right is. now. They're ready to compete. They're Fuck ready to fight. get into it and use that bra, bra, <laughs> raw, brutal force. Masculine, Very penile, phallic, <laughs> induced force. <laughs> So, guys, no wonder we, we like love you so much. <laughs> it's fucking awesome. We forgive you for being boys. Don't break laws, okay? That everything Shut still up! does revolve around consent, absolutely. But girls, lighten up a little bit. If he talks about his penis size, just fucking oh, laugh, God. okay? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so the Lighten ego. up a little bit. And you know what? I'm, nope. I'm, and dudes, you fucking lighten up too. You know, if, if you're at a private nope. party with all of your, you stop that. <laughs> if girls want to take off their shirts and their bras and run around with their boobies hanging out, you motherfuckers get to do that Just all year round. And it. we're not allowed to do that shit for this season. I'm gonna do it. And I don't give a shit. And if you're stupid enough to walk into a tree because you're too busy looking at my tits, that's your fault. That is your fault. This is a season of self-expression. Yes. Sexuality. Okay? So we are going to express that. And you may have, like, oh my god, I've never even thought about doing that. It's your past. It's kind of like Halloween. It's the one day of the year. So when you can be anything you want to be. You want to be a whore, you're allowed to be. Mm -hmm. Okay? And you're forgiven. This celebration right here, we are encouraging you to be freaky frisky. Break the sensual. Consensual, okay? Safe. And safe. Yes, ma'am, please. Don't, you know, don't don't be spreading around diseases and making babies that you can't take or care of. Or doing it in okay? a place that you're not allowed to do it. Well, again, don't go to jail. But if you're at a private party and, and an orgy breaks out, you know, <laughs> don't get, let it, let it happen. <laughs> Fucking let it happen because it is that it's, along, it's that time as of long year. as everything's along among consenting adults, right? This is the time to let that craziness out, right? It needs to be about twenty so. percent cooler. <laughs> and you know, and if you do it nice and hard, <laughs> you, <laughs> I didn't mean it like that, oh, but hey, that's yeah. how it came out. If you do it, it's kind of like purging for the season, and, and you then you can get the rest of energy out. out. Yeah, mm-hmm. so you can go through the. <laughs> that was gross. <laughs> Is that Cookie Monster? <laughs> slurp, slurp. Okay, this is <laughs> all right. So we broke it down it to that out. point. <laughs> all right, we've got it. Okay, what are some cool activities? Or do we do we want to continue expanding on that, or do you want to jump into some fun activities? Well, I mean, like I think we're already going into the <laughs> <Okay>. activities. <laughs> so besides the obvious, mm-hmm. we, I think we've we've pretty much hammered that concept home <laughs> that this is a coupling time. <laughs> There's, you're so, you're so what do we do? Yeah. <laughs> I can, I can go in and fuck your husband. Go That's what you need. Him. <laughs> go do something that makes you sexy. This is a perfect time to go buy lingerie. Strip teasing was big, big in Rome. Maple. Well, that's fuck yeah. What are you? Doing? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Dancing around a pole. Yes, but when, yes, you're right. The Romans were all about strip that. teasing and that that was like one of their uh, finales from their parties that they would hold would yeah. be. The, and it was it the was, whores. It was the prostitutes that would put on strip teasing. It was a performance. And it was a the holy, one time. A holy performance, too. They, they were given. Woo. <laughs> it sounds like a demon vagina. That's the one time where they were allowed to do it. Yes. This is the one time you're allowed to do it, so do it. So maypoles. Maypoles. Let's talk about the maypole. All right. Uh, you can do any kind of maypole you want. I just want to. Like <laughs> I want to. I mean, like, I think we're posting links all over the place for the next week, basically, about different ways to celebrate a maypole. You can make one out of a paper towel tube, or you can go out and get this huge stripper pole, or you can go to whatever you want. I have a flagpole in my front yard. Yeah. You know, take that down. I'm going to get a ladder and, like, stick some wreaths up there there and some flowers and shit and then like duct tape some ribbons and stuff and I won't be parading around it naked because my neighbors would flip shit but it's still you know it's It's a maple and I mean it gets you dizzy I will say that much. Every time Especially I've been in you're one. drinking mead. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to remember, though, something, too, that the maypole is actually a symbol of the f- a, a, it's a penis. Fa- it's a giant phallic right. object again. So and we're all dancing around it, adorning it with yeah, pretty ribbons. Yeah, you can even put, like, horns and shit up top, because that is, man, corn? I am... I am big penis. The bigger, the better. It's like the Eiffel Tower. I've got balls you know? of steel. And you, that's why you don't really see too many um, gentlemen, even though I've seen, I have seen some dance around the Maypole. Most of the time, it Most was the, of women, the, time of the it's women of the village. And we are Most like, of them were the virgin, or not the virgin, the unmarried women of the village. Right. Traditionally. And it's just like, hey, look at me. I'm dancing on this big penis, and I'm young and sexy, and somebody come and impregnate me while I'm hugging this big penis. So, you know, maples, they're a lot of fun. But when you're having that family picnic, and if you do incorporate 
a maypole, don't make it look like a big dick. No, and don't be, like, and- grinding your crotch on it. <laughs> like, because <laughs> your mom is not going to like that very much. But if no. you keep it clean, it's still the same thing. It's still the same symbolism. Uh, I mean, like, how many people have seen Wicker Man? A lot. I mean, the Nicolas Cage one sucked. Mm-hmm. Everyone knows it. But yeah. then there was the other one. Uh, so a lot of people end up making little Wicker Men. Yeah. Or they will, you know, weaving was really important during Beltane. So a lot of the times if you want just a, especially if you have kids, little kids, this is a great time for them to make like corn husk dolls. Right. I know that that usually goes also with Lugnasa. Mm-hmm. But the idea of weaving something together, right. so like grasses or whatever, and then if you get to, if you are outside again, I mean, I this is a really good outdoorsy one. So there's a lot of things you can do inside, and but I like being able to burn those guys afterwards. Oh yeah. So you know whatever throw they're, they're you know not useful anymore. Just toss them in the fire. Right. Right. Um. They another fun thing even at any party you know if you're not you know by yourself I mean I suppose you could it, yeah you know what I'm gonna retract that you can if if you're with your significant other you are now the May King and Queen <laughs> ah, <Nice>. okay <laughs> and yeah so but at a party you know you can designate you can assign somebody as the May May Queen or the May King. And they Take actually a party game. Shit, yeah. There's, you know, and, and depending on the party, the the company, you know, that it could turn into something crazy or. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't. It doesn't have to get all dirty and you know swapping bodily fluids and that kind of stuff. But it's still fun. It's representing the young um, lord. The the. The Lord and the, the Lady yes. who are ready to couple for the first time. Because, right, that's exactly what's about to happen. He's about to impregnate her. So that's, you know, get kinky in the bedroom for a bit, you know, with, with your other. Speaking of parties, do a themed party and serve breakfast. Okay. That's, that's a big part of it is most of the breakfast foods are a representation of fertility and the sun god. Eggs. Exactly. Yeah. You've got pancakes and eggs and milk. And I know we were saying eat light, mm-hmm. but a lot of breakfast foods that, that berries and cream. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a lot to do with just that starting energy force that you right. need to continue forward. So themed, themed breakfast. I mean, like this That's could be fun. done with your family. This could be done with just your significant other or we've had some really good, like chicken and waffles, breakfast inspired themed parties that okay. were amazing. And if it's you, just you and your significant other and you are the queen and he is the king and your breakfast turns into a food fight, which leads <laughs> into an, you know, kinky thing, then that's so even it. better. <laughs> <laughs> food fight, baby. Give me some whipped cream. Okay. Uh-huh. All right. Uh, what are some more? Two, two, two. I do like making fairy gardens. Oh, fun. Yeah, we're talking about the little shitheads. Yeah. Uh, we so allow. something okay. nice to do the, for them. And I just like having this in general as a fairy garden because it gives them a place to kind of focus. Mm-hmm. So I'm able to go to that. I plant some special flowers in there all the time. Something that especially is beneficial to hummingbirds and bees. Butterflies. Yes, anything that's a good mm-hmm. happy pollinator flower, that's going to be a really good area for them. And then... Mm-hmm. So happy, I'm gonna die. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just, if you can, really, really try to get outside. You've been hibernating all fucking winter, and you're all lazy and lethargic, and, you know, it. you're so used to sitting on the couch all bundled up with a bag of popcorn and watching the fucking boob tube. That time is done. Get off your ass, get outside, go plant a fucking tree Just or do it. fertilize something, you know, mm-hmm. encourage growth. We're encouraging growth with nature, you know, we're helping oh. that. And we are encouraging growth within ourselves, too. So it's time to, you know, strap it on and go crazy. <laughs> okay? All right. Oh, there are... Ready? Huge amounts of other activities. I mean, I don't have a whole lot of other crazy ones that I need to get across. Uh, As far as the activities go, I mean, I think we've really covered a lot of it. You know, keep the intention simple. I mean, really, you're celebrating this energy, right? That's all I can say. Right, light and sexy and fun and new new birth of stuff. Um, Lots of fire. Recognize water. 
with the old, and in with the right, new. Right. So how about um, how about some magical stuff? Magical focuses for this time for the celebration, if you were. Well, like we were saying, I mean, if we want to talk about a good. I like <clears throat> having animals or things that I can't uh, symbols for certain mm-hmm. seasons. So I always think about this one as like the phoenix. Okay. So fire, the huge growth and rebirth and changes and everything. And then I'm thinking about the farmers. And so I've already planted that seed mm-hmm. from Ostara. So now would be more about like getting it in the dirt or trying to focus on the, again, like it's the New Year's resolution now start right. focusing on those things that I want to develop and right. take those steps. Well, I'm, I'm I'm actually talking about okay outside of the celebration. Okay, the party's done, you know. But for this particular season, I say I do want to incorporate a spell. Okay, mm-hmm. into it later on. Um, with all of these things that we've been talking about, is the perfect time to do spell work of attraction. Okay. If you're trying to attract a a new love into your life or a spell. A job. Yes. um, You want to spice up the love life between you and your significant other. So a lust spell between the two of you. Um, Protection spells are really good this time of year too. Okay. Manifestation. That type of thing. So if, if you are heavily into spell work, all these things that we just celebrated at this party, you can take it a step further and incorporate it into actual spells. Mm-hmm. Okay, but it's it's that season. That is, you've got the season working with you uh, behind the spell work. Right. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And then we would want to take into the effect that now we are in a waning moon. Yes, so we are presently in a waning moon. That night, <clears throat> how would we incorporate the fact that we've got a waning moon mm-hmm. and a lot of attractive things? I'm prude. Please, universe, get the stick out of my ass. Exactly. I just yeah, want... put a penis in my pussy for once because I really need it because I'm being a crotch. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> you like that? <laughs> exactly. So to keep in mind, you've got to expel things that you're trying to rid yourself of so mm-hmm. that you can incorporate the things that we want to bring in. So right. attractiveness, that mm-hmm. outgoing behavior. So get rid of my uh, anxieties or help me get rid of my, you know, um, social fears. Yeah. And yeah, your inhibitions even. Yeah. It's like... Yeah, I, I challenged people earlier to face a fear, you know, and if if you really, if you, in, in order to do that, if you need a little help, then you know what? There's your homework. Do a spell on yourself to to release a little bit of fear. And then once that, that, that happens, then get out, get your ass out there and confront something. Yes. Because it's, um, yeah, we're, we're always trying to get rid of things that do not serve us to bring in things that actually make us healthy. And yeah, okay, we're pushing a whole lot of sex on you tonight. And but you know what? No, sex God. is healthy. It is healthy. And a lot of practitioners will incorporate a lot of sex magic. Polarity magic oh. right now. The the power behind orgasm. I mean we can oh, huge. we can That's have a be whole, whole podcast section. about oh, sex magic my. and I'm sure our ratings and our downloads are gonna like mm-hmm. go sky high when we really start getting into that stuff. And then people will be bummed but, out that it's not all about right. it. <laughs> like porn. Okay. Um but yeah, sex is healthy. So even Especially to get when rid it's of, between people that love you. I mean, like, it's healthy if you're, it's spontaneous and with somebody you don't know, as long as it's safe. Even better, and all the more powerful Mm -hmm. when it's with your partner that you can work with. Yeah, two like minds, and yeah, definitely create a a more powerful outcome rather than two. I don't know who you are, and we're We're just just gonna fuck. We're we're doing this for the the immediate (laughs) satisfaction. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're Sometimes you need that. That itch needs to get scratched. Shit, yeah, Don't and there, <laughs> there are plenty, you know, and I, I commend the people that prefer to stay single, you know, and they're honest and open about it, as long as you're not, you know, hurting anybody in the process. You want to go out there and be a horny goat, male or female? You fucking rock it. You <laughs> go for it. And that's that's what makes you happy. So, anyway. Okay, where, where are we going? I keep straying back to the whole 
sex thing? I don't know. I think like we were just trying to wrap it up because okay. we've got the last bonus thing that I wanted to add in because... I really like this about certain blog bloggers and everything mm-hmm. when they do a divination. Yeah. And it's generalized maybe for the season or for the upcoming week and everything. And astrology, you can read into it and it's going to be, pre- you can find it so much. But right. this is like a personal divination that we both wanted to delve into for this season. And mm. doing it for <clears throat> the viewers or doing it as a general thing, I mean, that, that's what, what my focus was was more or less things to be aware of coming up as like a general sense or like the what Beltane is going to bring forth. What okay. am I going to be able to look forward to in the season? And I was, in all honesty, I probably could have been a little more creative with my pull on this one this evening, and I'm going to blame it to not... Uh, thinking about it sooner because I've been pretty busy lately. So I'm going to fall back on my true and faithful tarot um, for this. And I have actually selected four different tarot cards mm. that um, I think are um, strong influences of this season. And anybody who's into tarot, it would um, you, you may appreciate it. And, it's, and they're all from the Major Arcana. So I pulled the Emperor the Empress, the High Priestess, and the Magician. Nice. For the evening. Um, The Emperor and the Empress, primarily the Empress being the ultimate epitome of perfect female, Mm -hmm. pretty much. Um, The moon. Yes. And the Emperor being the sun. Okay, the ultimate perfection of male. Uh, The High Priestess, to me, she's more of the internal, okay, all of the the unknowing. She's more of my moon. Yeah, actually. you're right. I would she, consider she really her is. higher. Where the empress to me is more earth. Okay, okay. that would make sense. Um, but the but the magician was very important to me too because of our skills. Okay. Okay, and applying those skills. And again, over the winter, long cold months, and even you know, um, in in bulk in Ostara. Okay, we've been kind of meditating on the goals that we would like to reach at the end of the year. Right. So we should already be to, to the point where we kind of we kind We're of know to some things. Yeah, well. I, I know what I want to do by the end of this year. So the magician is the one that says, "Okay, these are your skills. This is your power of doing. Let's get up and let's let's do it." Okay. Okay. So those were my four picks. Cool. Um. So mine was luck of the draw. Okay. And I d- tried to do it as a traditional rune casting mm-hmm. style. So, cool runes. Yeah, I. That's my new. I, I love tarot. Mm-hmm. I need to take a break from it for a minute just to. I, I can digest it, and then I need. We'll go back into it. But I like including runes as a, a, an alternative thought process. Okay. Because the idea behind runes is the interpretation. Isn't the guide is as heavy of a guiding force? I mean, like you know what that means, but that interpretation isn't going to change as much as the when you cast it. It seems like that's where the interference or more of the the adjustments will happen. So what you get is what you get, and those are the you have to look at that. And I keep I kept alluding to this earlier about how pleased I was with the casting because mm-hmm. I ended up getting Urus. Which we've gone over before, which is the uh, Aurox, or the oh, Ox, the Wild Ox. Yeah, I remember that that beast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then Wunjo, which we haven't gone over yet. And so, first we'll go into Uros, and because that was the first one that I drew, mm-hmm. and that one pretty much is the manif- manifestation of raw strength and physical power. Unbridled. And the uh, gladiator, yeah, what you call him, Viking... Yeah, straight up warrior, yeah. crazy energy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, sexy shit. Okay, like mind Sorry. over matter, matter over mind. Okay. Like just straight on force, mm-hmm. and that's not always Ooh, best. Sexy. That's not always all you need because it could also be, you know, usually it, it represents like a sudden, usually potent or usually positive change. But you have to be able to control that change and let that energy go in the right direction. Otherwise, it could just go all over the fucking place and right. you're exerting too much energy. Okay. So it's putting that strength on the right things. Cool. And then Wunjo 
is all about joy and comfort and pleasure and fellowship and harmony and prosperity and ecstasy and just all very, very happy things. Nice. But it's about wish fulfillment and the correct application of those wishes. Okay. Knowing what's realistic and within grasp and working as a collective whole to make that outcome happen. So... How much more fitting could these two be right. for what we're going into? Pretty right. much it's just saying that we there's going to be some major work ahead, mm-hmm. and it's going to require some serious efforts on our ends, mm-hmm. but as long as you have that collective, trusted uh, group of people. So it's not saying trust everybody, because it's more about harmony within the family, within close companions, mm-hmm. trusting your few select people. Being able to harness that energy together is going to have a really positive outcome, and it's going to be able to change the effects for the group. Okay. So I like. I, I like. was very happy with this one. It was um, we the, the the idea behind this hopefully is for everybody that you know look at your companions, look at the people that you can see that will benefit you in the future. If you've got a good idea, don't be afraid to talk to somebody about it and Mm -hmm. see if you can get that rolling. Mm -hmm. But don't look for this compassion to come from everybody. Don't look for (laughs) everyone to be excited about it. You will be greatly disappointed if if that happens. And you're going to put too much energy into chasing down all these people that you want to come and help you. Right. And you're going to waste all your time doing that. And then that. you're going to get bummed out. Right. And then you're just going to throw your hands in the air. And you're going to say, fuck it. No, nobody wants to play with me. I'm just not going to play it all. Fuck all of you. And then you're in this big rut of woe is me bullshit. Right. And right. when we start off with Uros, and it's the Aurochs. And the Aurochs was this ox that died out in the 17th century. It was the quintessential representation at that time for unbridled energy. Haha. <laughs> Because it's the father of the basic cow, like what it's, the domesticated cow father. So that was the untamed side. That's like riding a bull in the rodeo. Exactly. Yeah, worse. Baby. Worse. So it was like yeah. a mix between a mammoth and a bull. <laughs> and when you have that kind of crazy energy coming from all directions, yeah. it's only when you're able to direct that into a very specific sense that you're going to be able to have any out outcome that's going to be really beneficial to that, you. That's, yeah. How do you get a bucking bull to behave? It's how, how are you supposed to control that? You grab it by the balls? No. I mean, that's, you have that's no easy. You have other people <laughs> with other lassos and you all take it's it down like, like a group. Holy shit. And even then, you know, chances are he's still going to kick the fuck out of all of you. But yeah, that, that's some that's some power right there. Yeah. So there's a lot of good things for people, not just us, mm-hmm. but as a whole. And we're going to be able to only be able to have that, like, it's going to work out mm-hmm. if you can get your shit together with other people. Get your shit together yourself first. Right. Because unless you can harness your own energy, it's going to be useless to everyone else. Mm-hmm. And then f- figure it out. Reach out to people. This is a time when everyone wants to start working together. This again. is a time of union. Yeah. Of sharing, coming out, you know, Put your fucking phones down and your iPads and pods and stuff and actually look at somebody across from you at a picnic table. Yeah. You know, go, you know, go up and take a hike with somebody, you know, um... Do a drum yeah. circle. Go outside. Yeah. You know, I mean, why, why do you have to, why do you have to bring all these electronic gadgets with you when you're sitting down in a room full of people? You know, I'm not even going to go too far in, into that because now I'm just going to get pissy. <laughs> you know, it, the point is it's a time of union, of fellowship. Everybody's, all the animals are coming out of their caves. They're looking for friends. They're looking for fuck buddies. And you can't do that. When your face is still stuck behind electronics or if your ass is planted on the couch, you know, don't expect anybody to come to you beating down your door because you know what? You ain't that special. So you need to get Plan out a there. party. Yeah. Yeah. Have them come to you. Right. All right. Wow. I am so looking forward to Beltane. And I hope that we've kind of put a little ants in your pants when it comes to oh. Beltane. Just it's enjoy like, it. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't have to be grand. It doesn't have to be sure, the biggest thing in the world. Big, big. She wants it bigger. Hard. Harder. <laughs> <laughs> but 
it's that goofy fun energy. Yeah, it really is, you know, and just lighten up a little bit. Be safe, be smart, and but have, have fun. some fun. Yeah. All right, guys. Are we are going to say goodnight? This is goodnight. All right. Bye, Bye babies. This is Feather. And LaFay. Enjoy your Beltane. We'll, we'll talk to you soon. And thank you for joining Season of the Witch. <laughs>